Welcome to the daily update. It's been a few days since I've been able to do a video, and this is not just going to be a daily update. It's going to be a combination daily video, weekly video, intermarket analysis video. Also, as I go through this video, I'm not going to do any editing. As I've been telling a lot of you, I've been traveling quite a bit lately, and I just haven't had a chance to be able to do the videos like I like to do. Well, I decided to just take everything, put it all together, stick it in one video, and do my best. I'm also not going to edit out any mistakes. <clears throat> so like clearing my voice right now or tripping over words, that's all going to be left in here because I want to get this done and posted as soon as possible. But I would like some feedback. Do you think it's better for me to go ahead and put together a video even when I'm pressed for time, even when it's unorganized? Or would it be better to wait until I can do a more polished video? That would be an interesting thing for feedback. The charts that you're going to see are going to be out of order quite a bit, not in the usual flow. I've been doing a lot of work and coming up with a lot of ideas for how I'm going to present these videos. And I'm revamping everything so that it will cut out a lot of the time that I need to prepare, which will free me up to do other videos that I hope you'll find helpful. So I'll be making a video about those changes when I get a chance. As I've been riding around in planes, trains, and automobiles, I have all these ideas that I've been writing down. And over the next few weeks, I'm going to start implementing those. I probably won't really be able to get going on them until about the middle of May. That's when I return from this trip. Okay, so this is being prepared for Monday, May 1st. Also, please note, also I've been traveling quite a bit lately, and I'm doing the best I can with that. I do have a podcast. I, I'm not going to make a PDF of these slides. I don't know how useful that is to a lot of you. Please let me know if you like the PDF that I put in the description for the podcast and for the slides. I would think that would be quite helpful. That's why I did that. I also have some other charts and PDFs and things that I'm creating that I'll be putting in the description as well, but I'm going to explain that in a separate video when I'm able to do it. I do have a private Facebook group. I have been posting some things there. I've also been posting some things on the community tab to keep you informed of my posting schedule. And then any other platforms that you might use. I've got a blog. I'm going to be totally revamping that, developing the new website. I've been working on that now for a couple of years any of the other social media platforms, please let me know if you use those and you would like me to post to those. And then I'm not going to put up a poll right now. I just don't have enough time. I can't really even go through the results of the latest poll. All right. The first thing we're going to look at here in our analysis is showing how the small caps are really continuing to underperform. We had pretty strong days on Thursday and Friday, but the small caps are lagging behind, and that's a pretty big warning sign. Before I really dive into this, I have a ton of charts, so I'm just going to be going through them as quick as I can. The equity put call ratio still is not really giving us a signal right now to work from. Here is a look at the growth versus value where we're, we are seeing some improvement with the Qs to the S&P. Discretionary is not really doing all that well, and large cap growth to large cap value is looking a little bit better. Here's our growth to value ratios with the large cap improving, not with the mid caps and not with the small caps. Another warning sign. With price being able to rebound on Thursday and Friday, mainly in reaction to economic reports as well as earnings reports, we've been able to get back up into the plus two standard deviation area, which that's more of a healthy move up without going up too far too fast. The PPO studies still show that we are positive with the long, intermediate, and short term. We're turning back up. This was starting to go a little bit negative, but right now it's showing some improvement. We do have overhead resistance above where we're at right now, and we have not broke through that yet. We're getting close. Are we going to be able to break through and keep going up, or is this going to provide some resistance and then send us back down? We're also seeing a little bit of a negative divergence between the S&P and the NASDAQ, where the S&P was able to break above this blue line. The NASDAQ still has not done that yet. That's another warning sign. The equal weight index is underperforming the S&P. That's also a warning sign, meaning that some of the big stocks are really making up this positive move 
that we saw over the last few days. The VIX continues to fall, showing that there's really no fear in the market right now. The correlation between the S&P and the two-year yield shows that they're going in a pretty strong relationship in the same direction. Looking at the S&P to the 10-year yield, also fairly strong in the same direction. The dollar, pretty much neutral right now with its relationship. Then, see, I'm throwing in some intermarket analysis stuff, too, where now we're seeing the S&P underperforming the rise in interest rates. Even though it has been showing some improvement, we have not crossed over positive yet with this ratio. Growth continues to underperform value, but it is showing some improvements. This is showing how value is still in an overall uptrend when compared to growth, but we have not crossed over yet with this ratio. The 10-year to the tech sector shows that the drop in interest rates has been going down a lot faster than the rise in the tech sector. So tech is outperforming the rise in interest rates. Here's another look at the VIX of the VIX, showing how volatility is really starting to fall. The S&P, the oil, pretty strong relationship going in the same direction. Stocks continue to outperform bonds even on our longer term chart. Healthcare is still in an overall downtrend. Here's the condition of our trend on the daily chart. We're trying to turn back up with the ADX. The green line crossed back above the red line. That's positive. If you were aggressive, you probably already went long at least a little bit with that. If you're more conservative, you want this to turn back up, get above the moving average, and then eventually get above the 20 level. But we're still seeing some divergences here where the S&P has been going up, but the number of stocks in the S&P that are above their 200 moving average, it's going up, but it's not going up like prices. And the same thing is true with the 50 period moving average. The Sean Trend Meter starting to look extreme positive again. Here's an intermarket analysis chart. Oil still in the lead. You've got gold and the dollar pretty much overlapping each other. This goes back to the beginning of 2022 where stocks and bonds are improving, but they're still negative overall. Our rune starting to turn back up, getting a little bit extreme, showing that buyers are in control as sellers are dropping off. The daily chart also shows that we have not been able to break through this upper resistance level yet. The advanced decline line, working off of this negative divergence where price was going up, volume was going down, but both are showing an improvement. And for volume, we did get back above the moving average. Swollen trading oscillator, turning back up, but still below zero based on price and volume. And there's also a negative divergence here that we've been working off of. Advanced decline ratio also showing some improvement above zero in advancing. We were able to get back above the 20 period simple and exponential moving averages. That's a big improvement. The McClellan oscillator, even though we've been going up with the S&P, we're not really going up as strong with the McClellan oscillator. Now, part of this negative divergence is how this calculator, how this indicator is calculated. It can't help but do a negative divergence, but we can also look at this as a potential warning sign. The PMO, after crossing back over and going negative, it's trying to turn back up, but it has not done that yet based on price and volume. The PMO study actually went extreme negative, and we're bouncing up out of that. We're turning back up with the buy signals and starting to turn back up with the PMOs that are above zero. The elder impulse system for the S&P is positive. Here's our oscillators. The slope is still negative. The TSI is trying to turn back up. The MACD, after going negative, is trying to turn up. Then our other intermediate term oscillators, the PMO and the PPO, are trying to show some improvement. We're still crossing over with the TRIX as well as the KST. Those are our longer term oscillators. This is another big thing that I noticed. The dot is now drawn underneath with the parabolic SAR on the daily chart showing a real improvement over the last couple of trading days. Stochastics, already extreme positive in the short, short term, getting more positive in the intermediate term, still extreme positive in the longer term. New highs, new lows, this is another warning sign. We haven't really turned back up. We're showing some improvement with the new highs, but we haven't crossed back above this other moving average with the five period moving average. But we are seeing some improvement there and our 10 period is going back up slightly. 
The BPI, after coming back down, did show a little bit of improvement. It's declining, but it's still above 50. The CCI 14 is just barely extreme positive, and the CCI 20 is extreme positive. Taken money flow, holding up fairly well. Taken oscillator, also positive. The force index, and I didn't get a chance to change this little bubble thing here, but it is turned back to positive. The money flow turned back up and is above 50. That's positive. We're seeing a pickup in volume overall. Special K, this is our long-term measurement of the trend. We're still trying to decide if it's going to cross above this moving average. The Stoke RSI, just barely extreme positive. Ultimate oscillator, positive. The vortex, the green line crossed back above the red line, that's positive. Williams percent R is extreme positive. The summation index based on price is turning back up, and we're also starting to turn back up based on volume. Accumulation distribution also holding up fairly well. We're above all plotted moving averages again. The ulcer index ticked up a little bit, but still shows that there's not a lot of fear. Heiken Ashi turning back more positive. The Kagi chart, that's a dark, really hard to see there. That's the black line right there, which is more positive. The Renko is still positive. Three line break turning back more positive. We're still at a high level with the 10 day average of our highs minus the lows. Staples are still in an overall uptrend. Value continues to underperform growth. And the small caps, as I said, are underperforming the S&P. That's a warning sign. We're still in mostly in it. Let me back up. We're still mostly in a risk off posture. The mega cap growth ETF continues to be in a positive trend. The mega cap against the equal weight index is also showing a lot of improvement. The NASDAQ is continuing to outperform the S&P 500. We're not getting a real extreme reading with our red X bear bull ratio. We're just about in the middle currently. And we're above this 2020 level, which had been at, excuse me, 4020 level, which had been acting as support, bouncing back up. We have more resistance at the 4214 level. Longer term, we're still just barely above this 50% retracement. It's at 4156. The S&P is at 4169. That's positive in that we got above that and closed above it. Can we stay at that level and go even higher? Weekly, we're still looking pretty good with our longer term trend. And the S&P 500 big stocks continue to outperform the rest of the S&P 500. On balance volume is still positive. We were able to break back above this 41.23 level. We're at 41.69 right now. If we fall, we'll be looking to see if that will provide support. We're still on the upper side of this trend channel going back to 2009. The comparison between the S&P and the long-term bond ETF, they were both up, but we're starting to see the spread go even a little higher now. Longer term, they tend to correlate fairly well. Shorter term, they're having a tendency to go in opposite directions. The SKU index not really giving us any kind of an extreme reading. When you look at the out-of-the-money options, both above and below the current price of the S&P, as the VIX continues to fall, low volatility still in an overall uptrend. And when you compare the low volatility stocks to the S&P, they are in a downtrend. They've been underperforming. Our longer term look at the 50 period moving average of the highs minus the lows, we are still positive because the indicator itself is still positive. This is a longer term signal too. The NYSE breadth thrust, which triggered a signal back in October, that's still on the books. And the stock to bond correlation shows that stocks and bonds are going in opposite directions of each other. Peer growth. This is a big change. Not too long ago, we had a death cross showing that there's more weakness in peer value. And then we compare that to growth in other charts. We're also seeing a negative divergence here. Here we have the S&P, which came up and got pretty close to previous highs. The NYSE cumulative advanced decline line didn't do that, even though it's showing some improvement. And the NYSE advanced decline line also made a lower high here. That's a warning sign for a negative divergence. 
Here's growth, which continues to be in an overall downtrend. Even though we're seeing value under go into a downtrend, growth has not clicked over into an uptrend yet. The S&P utilities ratio still shows that the S&P is underperforming. That's a warning sign. The NYSE bullish percent index didn't really tick back up on a good solid day. So that is more of a warning sign and negative. The two-year treasury yield starting to come back up slightly. We're wondering if a fall in the two-year yield will give some support to stocks. That just hasn't been happening yet. The elder impulse system for the SPY, which is the ETF for the S&P, is now back to positive. Comparing growth to value, showing that growth is still in an overall downtrend, even though it's improving. This is an inverse of that same chart, showing how value is still in an overall uptrend compared to growth. And looking at growth against bonds shows that the growth stocks have been outperforming bonds, even though bonds have been doing a lot better up for over the last month or so. The energy sector is still starting a new downtrend compared to the S&P. And energy to tech just shows that energy is now starting to show some weakness as tech has been coming in and becoming more strong. The tech sector is still in an overall uptrend. And when you compare the tech sector to the rise in interest rates, the tech sector has been outperforming. And the tech sector is also outperforming the S&P 500. The staples, we're going up and creating a new spike now. It's starting to come back down. Will this be a new spike that we can work from that will give some good solid support to the S&P? That's what we're watching for. We're still working off this WAG NYSE breadth thrust signal that was generated. That's still on the books going forward. The fear gauge that we look at did see a bit of a decline in fear. Then looking at the advanced decline line study where we're back above the moving average with the NYSE, the S&P, the mid caps, Small caps continue to lag, a warning sign. Looking at inflation, we're also showing more of a deflationary pattern now. Copper to gold shows how copper has been underperforming gold. Here's the long-term look at that same chart compared to the two-year yield. We see the ratio actual, actually going down as gold has seen a lot more favor lately, but it's been hitting some pretty significant resistance. Here's the current price for corn showing how it has been dropping. The CRB has been underperforming the S&P. Here's the Dow Jones Composite Average, which is still in an overall uptrend and showing some improvement. Aluminum is now in an overall downtrend. Gas has been falling back lately. The gold futures, here's that level at around 2000 or so where we bumped up it now against this three times. And we closed just under 2000 with the gold futures. Heating oil has also been coming down. Lumber has also resumed its downtrend. Here's a longer term chart of the NYSE composite showing that the Copic curve is now turning back up. That's longer term positive. The FANG stocks are in an uptrend. Here's another divergence where we're seeing the S&P going up. The McClellan oscillator based on the NYSE, not just the S&P 500 is also showing a negative divergence. The NYSE against the record high percent index is still positive overall. That's very positive in the longer term. And the PPO longer term is also in an overall uptrend. That's positive. The S&P 500 of the CRB shows that the S&P has been outperforming the CRB index. And then the S&P 500 continues to outperform global indexes. We're still above this moving average, but the KST is starting to roll over. So we're getting a mixed picture from this chart. Also, another look internationally. We're still above this moving average, even though we've been falling down. And the PPO has also been declining. That's a warning sign longer term. Bonds continue to outperform the CRB index. And then we take a broad range of the... Highs minus the lows and then use a five period moving average. That continues to be negative. That is a warning sign. Wheat continues to fall. Oil continues to jump around and fall for the most part. The euro, which is kind of strange because I wish the euro was really weak right now because I'm in Germany. But no, it's been in an overall uptrend. 
This Baltic Dry Index gives us a look at inflation. That hasn't really been rising all that much. Copper has been pretty much chopping sideways. The dollar is still above 100, so that's positive. We're waiting to see if we can get a bit of a bounce out of this, but on the daily chart, we continue to be in a downtrend. Here's the ETF for gold. Now it's just been chopping around, but it's still in an overall uptrend. There's a longer term look at that same chart showing these three spikes that we've been having trouble getting through. Silver is also in an overall uptrend. Here's a longer term chart of silver, the ETF. The CRB continues to be in an overall downtrend. Small cap still having a lot of trouble and we're getting near a death cross with the small cap index. The Dow still having a really hard time breaking through this pivot level. This is significant overhead resistance right now. We're still positive overall, but we want to watch this level at about the 34,100 level. Dow theory, seeing some negative divergence here, breaking out a bit with the Dow, not breaking out with the transports, also showing some weakness with utilities. The mid caps also having a hard time breaking above this pivot level. We're above the 200 day moving average, but still below the 50 period moving average. The NASDAQ showing some improvement. So you have one, two, three. We now could be making a quadruple top with the NASDAQ. We need to see this really break out to the upside and it just hasn't done that yet. NASDAQ 100 did break out a little bit here, but these are the bigger stocks that came out with earnings reports that everybody loves, and so that really pushed up this index. NYSE Composite continues to be in an uptrend. The S&P 100 is outperforming the S&P 500. Discretionary is really starting to struggle a little bit here. It's not doing as strong as it was before when compared to staples. ARC still is in an overall downtrend. All stocks continue to be in an uptrend. High leverage loans, if the economy was getting ready to fall off a cliff, this would not be going up as strong as it is. Bitcoin broke back down below 30,000. The British pound is still in an uptrend to the dollar. The diamonds continue to be positive. The transports continue to underperform the Dow, which is kind of reflected in that Dow theory chart that I just showed. First Republic Bank, my goodness. I understand over the weekend that First Republic has been purchased and who knows what's going to happen to the stock price come the opening session on Monday. Gold is still outperforming the S&P 500. Gold is also outperforming the dollar. The micro caps are hanging in there. As long as we're above 100, we're not setting a new 52-week low. Here's the Russell showing some improvement with the RSI, but we're still below 50. The MACD has turned over negative, and we're having a real difficult time getting above the 200-day moving average, and we're seeing a death cross. The Japanese yen is still in an uptrend compared to the dollar, as is the euro. And here's a shorter version of that, or a honed in version of that chart, even though it's still in an uptrend. The NYSE advanced decline line is still hanging in there with a series of higher lows, at least to this point. But we're seeing some divergences here when you take only the common stock, where we're making a series of higher lows, but we're not making higher lows based on volume. That's a negative divergence. We're, break, we're still above this 38.2% retracement for the NASDAQ 100. That's positive. If we fall, we'll be looking at support at the 12864 level. The NASDAQ 100 is really outperforming the NASDAQ. Natural gas continues to fall. The Qs are in an uptrend. Semiconductors also hanging in there, but seeing some recent weakness. And this is not really telling us all that much right now. This is comparing cash to the tech sector. When this is going down overall, that means the tech sector is doing really good. When this spikes up, that means the tech sector is doing bad compared to cash. We have been bouncing around a little bit, but we're still in an overall downtrend, which is just reinforcing some of the strength that we're seeing in the tech sector. Small caps back to neutral at best right now for their trend. The mid caps have switched back to positive. Banking, 
sector is really under a lot of problems still. The Wilshire is in an uptrend. Looking internationally, we're turning down with China, emerging markets, rolling over a bit with Europe, look to be topping out a bit with Japan, and also could be topping out in the U.S. The home builders, not really seeing anything all that strange right now. They performed well in Thursday and Friday's session. The relationship between the home builders and the S&P remains strong. Materials in an overall uptrend. Healthcare in a downtrend. Discretionary, still in a downtrend. Communication in an uptrend. Energy, death cross here with the ratio. Financials, also negative. Industrial, still in an overall uptrend. Staples continue to outperform discretionary. And here's another look showing how Staples, after giving us a death cross, have shown some strength and we could be getting back and back ready for a golden cross. Real estate still in an overall downtrend. Utilities in a downtrend. Merging markets still in an overall uptrend. The Dow Jones Corporate Bond Index still is in an overall uptrend. The five-year yield is starting to come back down. It's rolling below this moving average. This special K, which is a long-term oscillator, we're starting to cross over negative. The KST is still positive. Here's another look. Short term, we've switched negative, intermediate term negative, and we've also crossed over negative with, actually we're still positive with the long term. Here's a look at our yields, where the 10 to the 2 and the 10 to the 3 months remain inverted. Those are the most important ones. The 30 to the 5 is still positive where the 10 to the 5 is still just barely negative or inverted. Bonds, kind of chopping around underneath the moving average with the 10-year yield. The 30-year yield also has been chopping around lately. Bonds have not really broken out against stocks when you look at the shorter-term maturities. The total bond ETF, though, is still in an uptrend. And we're seeing some chopping around with yields across the board. Here's a weekly chart showing how the U.S., U.K., and German rates came back down over the last week. Japan, as I always said, is its own story that I'm keeping an eye on. The Pring World Bond Index continues to be in an overall uptrend. The 10-year yield also has been chopping around quite a bit lately. High yield corporate bonds are still in an uptrend and junk bonds are also in an uptrend and junk bonds are outperforming government bonds overall. Investment grade bonds are still in an overall uptrend. The long term ETF short term turning back more positive intermediate term showing some weakness but it's still positive. What we're really looking at is this longer term measure and it's just barely starting to cross over positive. The tech sector to the rise in interest rates, fairly strong indication of going in the same direction. This is another fear gauge showing how fear has been dropping off. And then we look at the bond ETF. The MACD is showing some improvement. We're still above 50 with the RSI, but bonds have been really chopping around. This looks more like a machine gun went to the chart. Now, looking at some weekly charts, the NASDAQ is still in an overall uptrend. Copper is still in an uptrend. The CRB is in a downtrend. The biggest software companies in an uptrend. The Dow's in an uptrend. Mid-caps uptrend. NASDAQ 100 uptrend. The NASDAQ is outperforming the S&P 500. The NYSE is in an uptrend. FANG stocks are in an uptrend. The S&P 100 still is outperforming the S&P 500. Growth continues to underperform value. Small caps having some problems here, still in an uptrend, but some recent weakness. The 50 period moving average, which really equates to a 200 day moving average is still positive. The pivot points were above the monthly pivot for the S&P, that is positive. The Arun indicator still positive, even though it declined slightly. Swindling trading oscillator, seeing a bit of a decline based on price and volume, and we've actually gone below zero based on volume. That could be a longer term warning sign. The Wilshire is still in an overall uptrend. Oil has been chopping around. We're at 76.78 right now. The longer term trend for the S&P remains up. 
Here's the look at our weekly chart of the condition of the trend. We're still below the moving average. The green line's on top, even though it is declining. Stocks continue to outperform bonds. I think I saw this chart earlier. Here's a weekly look at the dollar. We're still in an overall downtrend. Also, I showed this chart earlier. This chart was earlier. You can see some overlapping here as I revamp everything. A longer look at the advanced decline line, we're still above the moving average based on price. We're coming back up above the moving average based on volume, but there's a little bit of a negative divergence in this chart. The advanced decline ratio is advancing, so that is positive. McClellan oscillator turned back up and is above zero, that's positive. The PMO is still positive. And based on price, we declined a little bit, but we're still above zero based on volume of decline, but still above zero. The PMO study, still hanging in there with the rising PMOs. We're declining with the number of buy signals, and we're still, still turning down with the PMOs that are above zero. New highs, new lows. Seeing a little bit of weakness here on the weekly chart as well. Turning down with our four-period moving average, but we're still advancing with the 10-period moving average. The BPI is starting to turn back down, but we're above 50. The Bollinger Band's not giving us an extreme reading with the percent B index. The weekly chart of the S&P continues to be positive with the Elder's Impulse System. Here's a look at the weekly chart of our oscillators. We're positive with the Slope, TSI, MACD, PMO, PPO, TRIX, and KST. It's shorter term where we're seeing some problems. You could see down here at the bottom, the KST is having a little bit of trouble. Parabolic SAR for the weekly chart still has the dots underneath, so that is positive. Shaken money flow is positive. Shaken oscillator is positive. The ease of movement is still positive, even though it declined slightly over 14 periods and we went slightly down from one week to the next. The force index continues to be positive. The money flow indicator is still positive even though it declined. The rate of change going back one week is positive. 50 weeks showing a lot of improvement. RSI is above 50 in advancing. Special K, this is longer term. We're watching the daily chart to see a cross, but on the weekly chart, we're wondering, are we gonna cross negative here? That could produce some real conflict. The Stoke RSI is extreme positive, Ultimate Oscillator is positive, the Vortex is positive even though it declined, the Williams Percent R is still positive. Summation Index based on price and volume, even though we declined a bit based on volume, we are still positive overall. And then this is looking at the different indexes with no studies. Here's the S&P showing a, not as quite not quite as much strength with the mid caps, but we're seeing some weakness here with the small caps. Accumulation distribution continues to be positive. The Copic curve trying to go positive. We lost the signal on the daily chart. We're still working off of a signal on the weekly chart. Here's a weekly chart of the ulcer index showing that fear is really low. The Heiken Ashi is positive. The Kegi chart is positive. Sorry for clearing my throat. Ranko is positive. Three-line break turning more positive, all stocks positive, ARC still negative overall. Looking at the bond ETF still in an overall uptrend. Here's a longer look at Dow theory where we've been going sideways with the Dow, showing a little bit of negative divergence with the transports and some weakness with the utilities. Here's the gold ETF showing that we're still in an overall uptrend. Gold continues to outperform the S&P. Bonds, even though they're doing well, they're not really outperforming stocks on this chart. Here's the bank index, which is still in an overall downtrend. Our longer term trend that we've been looking at, we're above the zero line with the MACD and advancing, suggesting that this breakout above this trend line can still be taken as real. Here's another look at the trend chart that I already showed. Silver is also in an overall uptrend. Gold continues to outperform the dollar. Low volatility stocks are underperforming the S&P. And I already showed this chart of the breadth thrust buy signal. The VIX on the weekly chart is continuing to decline, showing a lot of complacency. Energy is now out underperforming tech. Discretionary continues to underperform staples. 
Okay, then we get to the outlook. We're still in the middle of earnings season. The technicals are improving. We're kind of getting a mixed picture right now. Thursday and Friday were impressive days, but it doesn't hasn't really changed some of the negative, negative backdrop that had been forming. We have the IHS market manufacturing PMI coming out and construction spending. Then the whole list of geopolitical events. Interest rates and earnings are kind of the name of the game right now. And then any more banking information that may come out. For scenarios, can't really go with the down one. The technicals are improving. You could possibly go with the up one if you're more aggressive because of the crossover between the green and the red line on our ADX. We still tend to favor the sideways trend, even though it, this should be it's below its moving average. Didn't change that. The green line is advancing if you are more aggressive. Thank you. I hope this was helpful. My goodness. I'm just rattling this stuff off. There's really no rhyme or reason to it. Let me know. Was this helpful to you? I want to help you. I don't want to make you more confused. I'm going to revamp and reorganize everything. I just don't have the time to do it right now. So on that note, I'm going to go do some touring of the old Nuremberg Rally Grounds before I get set to do the next phase of the trip, which is heading from, Nürn heading from Nuremberg, Germany to Warsaw, Poland. So I will talk to you in the next video, whenever that may be.